Hey guys, how's it going today? Today we're going to be looking at how to install Puffer Panel onto an Ubuntu uh, distro. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So the first thing you want to do is put up, pull up your favorite uh, SSH uh, utility. I use uh, Putty, but there's other ones out there. I have my public IP address in there. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. We're going to hit yes. We're going to log in with our root username and password. All right, we are logged in. So we're going to start off with some pre-requests. Um, if you have Apache installed, um, it's not going to be able to use because you're installing another uh, web server and this is NGINX. So we're going to go ahead and install some of their pre-requests here. We're going to add the PHP uh, repository because this uh, panel is um, based off of PHP. We're going to do a, um, up, oh, move a little too quick. Go ahead and hit enter on this. <clears throat> it's going to be downloading um, that repository for PHP. And then once this is done, we're going to run a sudo update command. So it's going to grab the la latest Ubuntu security updates. And then now we're going to go ahead and install MySQL. And I'll have all these commands one by one as I'm doing them uh, in the description below this video. So if you want to check that out, that will definitely help you out. And then after this gets done running, we're going to do a MySQL underscore secure underscore installation. Um, we're going to basically set up the root password during that time. So you do want to have make sure you have a strong password when we go through this next step here. So we are almost done here, 95%. We'll also show you um, how to install your first CSGO uh, server through Steam. So now we're gonna run this to secure the installation. Hit yes. And then we're going to do just medium strength for passwords. Now we're gonna type in our MySQL password. We're going to remove anonymous users. Yes. And yes for disable remote logins. Remove test database. Yes. Uh, yes. And that part is done. So now we need to run and make a directory here and CD into that. Then we're going to actually download the Puffer Panel installation. <clears throat> so we're going to run that. Then we're going to extract it. Then we're going to CD into the Puffer Panel. That has appeared there. <clears throat> then we're going to change the folder permissions. Then we're going to and run the installation. And now it's asking for our MySQL information, which is localhost, same default port. The username is going to be root. And then that password we set earlier, we're going to need that again here. And that's fine. We're going to have to put in the IP address, which is going to be our 4577164.221. And then this is the... Uh, Use, now be careful, you're going to want to make sure you have this information. This is going to be the login for the Puffer uh, panel. So we're going to just do uh, video test at AOL.com. We're going to type in the same password here. And creating the user, fi finishing up the installation. We only have a couple more things to do here which is uh, install Steam CMD for Linux. You're definitely going to want this installed if you're going to want to run any source dedicated servers. Um, if you're going to be running Minecraft servers, you're going to install Java for Linux. So you want to make sure you install that. I think it might actually automatically do that for you. But um, for Steam, you definitely need to install Steam CMD uh, for Linux to get that working. So, but we're going to make sure our panel works before we go ahead and run that installation. So, I hit no on that. And it's saying we should be accessible now. So if we go back to our previous tab, reload, and you can now see Puffer Panel is loading. 
and it's just your that IP address we set up. So we're gonna do our email that we set up, which is the video test, and then our password that we set up that we just generated. Hit login, and there you have it. <clears throat> you do have Puffer Panel set up. Like I said, there are a couple of things that we still have to do before you want to create um, a Steam server. So before we do all this, let's go back to our SSH tunnel and let's install Steam uh, CMD for Linux. So like I said, these uh, instructions one by one will be in the description of this video. So you can have it step by step. Let's go ahead and get run. We're gonna hit yes. And yes on the download. <clears throat> so let's go download the approve request here. We'll just wait for this to get done. I'll go ahead and pause the video here because this might take a little bit longer to, to download. All right, it's done downloading. So let's go ahead and run our next command. Oh, we copied and pasted the wrong thing here. There we go. Okay, next one, add in the repository. And in the structure, run another sudo update. Then our installation for Steam CMD. We agree to the terms of service here. And our last command, and then we can start installing CSGO or any Steam uh, based game. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna install our first CSGO server. Location, okay. We're gonna assign it to that test admin account. All the defaults are pretty good. So we can just go down 20 players, that's fine. Hit create server, hit created. Now we need to go into server control and it says ready to be installed. So go ahead and hit install. And it's just confirming that. We're gonna hit install and you can see it is downloading the Steam CMD. And then once that is done, it's actually gonna start downloading uh, the CSGO files inside this directory. And then we'll be able to run our first CSGO server. <clears throat> so like I said, this is gonna take a little bit because it's downloading. I don't know how big the game is now, five or 10 gigs for the server installation. Maybe maybe even more, I think it's actually 20 gigs now. Um, so this can take a little bit long. So I will pause the video here. And when we come back, we'll make sure the server starts up fine. and then. We'll go ahead and set up a Minecraft server as well. All right, like I said, the installation of CSGO might take some time. It could take 30 minutes to an hour, just depending on your uh, data center server speed, uh, well, internet speed, I mean. All right, like I said, this could take, you know, 30 minutes to an hour. We've only been doing it for about 10 minutes and we're already at 60% of the way there. So you can see that in the console area. Let's go ahead, go ahead and open up a new tab and go to create new server and let's create our Minecraft server because um, I just found out that you actually don't need to install Java. It automatically do everything for you already on that. So let's just do uh, test Minecraft server. And we're gonna go to server plugins. So we're gonna do just a vanilla Minecraft server. We need to set an owner. So we're set our admin there. We're gonna change the port because I already created our uh, Minecraft server, but this is gonna be the second one that we're doing. So that's why I changed the port, but you can change the port to whatever you want or leave it on the default and hit create server. Then same thing like the uh, Steam servers, you need to go to server control. Then it says it's ready to be installed. So once you see that, go ahead and hit install, click install again. And this is gonna be downloading the latest version uh, the server.jar from uh, my, uh, Minecraft. So we're gonna wait for this to be done. It looks like it's already done, wow. So server installed. We need to go ahead and go to our final manager before we hit start, go to file manager, click on the uh, terms of service text file, and we need to change this to true. 
if you don't do this, then you're going to get an error message and it won't start the server. So we're going to change that there. Your server.properties is all the different settings you're going to set up for your Minecraft server if you have any. We're going to, and then we're going to go back to our overview and then hit start. So we should see it starting up here in just a minute. And it should start our server here in just a minute. If you do get this error message here, that just means you need to go into your file manager and go into the uh, EULA, which is the terms of service, and you just need to agree to that. And you just type in true. Go back to overview, and you can see now our Minecraft server is starting up. So we're going to give this a second here. The first time this does, it, it's actually generating the world, and it takes a little bit of time. Uh, but you can see not too long. It's already at 15%, now 20%. Um, so we're going to wait for this to get done here, and we're going to copy our IP address here, and we're going to add this to our Minecraft server client. You can see our first one is already here, but since we added this on a different port, we need to go here and change that. Colon 25566, and then same down there so we know what server we're connecting to. We're gonna get hit done, and you can see it already popped up because this prepare and spawn error is already done, and you can see that the server is now live. If you go to information tab, you can see the CPU usage and memory usage is spiking, so that's good. So let's go back to our Minecraft client. Let's go ahead and join that second Minecraft server we created, and there you guys have it. It is working flawless. Usually if you see a server that's running kind of slow, it's because um, you're not on SSDs, but this is on an SSD Linux server, so it should run pretty, pretty flawless. But there you guys have it, how you can install Minecraft and CSGO on a Puffer panel and how to get it set up and run the installation so you can hopefully host some cool servers. So before I end the video, I'm going to go back to that CSGO server and make sure we can connect to it and we'll be up and running. All right, you guys, our CSGO server finally got done downloading. So we'll go ahead and hit start so we can start the CSGO server up. And then we'll go ahead and try and connect to it. And it looks like it's starting up pretty quick. So let's go to information. And you can see we are now running. You can see the CPU usage it's using. And this looks like we need to possibly add a server auth ticket. So we might need to change that. So let's go ahead and look at that. So let's go ahead and stop this. And we need to go to information. I did forget this step. And we actually need to edit the server. So let's do find server. Click on the CSGO server. Click on edit. And then this GSL token we need to go ahead and go to the steam community the link here that gives you right here and we need to get um, a game login token so when you create that login token it's going to ask you for an app id and for csgo it's app id 730 so you put that in there you hit create you're going to get a generated um, set of numbers there and you're going to, i'm going to go ahead and put mine in there right now but i don't want anyone else to see that so we're going to go ahead and just pause the video i'm going to paste that in and then hit update server so I'm going to do that right now. So I just updated the server. Now I'm back on uh, the remote area. So we're going to go ahead and hit start now. And now it should start up and we should be able to connect to it now. So let's wait for it to load. And you can see now we're getting the VAC secure mode is activated. It's connected to the Steam server. So now let's go ahead and open up Steam and see if we can connect to that server. All right, we have CSGO loaded up. We are connecting to our new CSGO server. So you can see it as everything is fully working. Uh, so yeah, this is it, you guys. Uh, this is how you can set up a Puffer panel on Ubuntu Linux, how to set up two uh, different types of servers. You got uh, uh, Steam, CAMD with CSGO, and then you got Java with Minecraft. But like I said, you don't need to install my, uh, Java on there because it looks like it automatically downloads the right binaries for it. So there you have it, you guys. Now you can have some fun and play some CSGO.